come out of there a little bit. Okay, bang, we're back here plugged in, right? I'm plugged in. We're coming up through the body with this energy. It's going to come out through this back elbow. Left-handed hitter, back elbow. Right-handed hitter, back elbow. This is the power collector. And what we're controlling here is we're controlling centrifugal force. Big word, huh? We're controlling this current of electricity out of the floor. Bang, coming up through here. If we move here, we lose it. If we move back here, we dissipate it. What we're trying to do is get it to go linearly online to the baseball. Online to the baseball. Basketball shooter off the dribble, right? Bang, in the power alley. Baseball shooter, power alley. Same thing. It's like trying to skip rocks across the lake. Bang. Throwing the ball sidearm. We film hitters throwing the ball sidearm. So we want to see where the back elbow is going. If I reach a point at any time to where the back elbow gets out, gets back, gets tense, this is what we call casting. It's like fishing, right? You guys have all gone fishing. You know, old bass back up on a log and you're going this way. Well, this, when you do this as a hitter, you're in dead trouble. If you separate, this is called separation or movement of the hand. If you wrap the bat moving back up around your head, separate, hitch, all these types of things are moving this energy out of this back elbow power collector number one. Now the pressure point for that are the lead three fingers of the top hand. Lead three fingers of the top hand. Call it the bottom three fingers, maybe simple. This is what we call a prehensile grip. This is the difference between our hands and those of the monkey. The monkey climbs a tree like this, right? Can't use the thumb and the finger together. We can. It also creates a problem for us in hitting. When we squeeze this off, we lock the wrist. Remember? We lock the wrist, we can't move. Lock the wrist, can't move. We open it, relax it. We open it this way. This is the door opener, prehensile grip. Open it up. Power collector number one. So we'll have drills where we'll actually work, swing the bat, work, swing the bat. Try to feel that back elbow move. We're taking the current of energy up, accepting centrifugal force here. It's collecting power and it's going to move the power in the power alley, up the slot, in the power alley. Pressure point where we feel it on the bat, we're transferring energy to it, bottom three fingers of that hand. Don't choke it off, prehensile grip. Don't choke me off here. If you block the bat off, tenses the muscles, takes me into my shoulders, I start spreading, separating, swinging the bat like Sally Sue. She's not a good hitter. She's cute, but she's not a good hitter. Second, lead wrist. It's a cocked action, and this is, watch the bat right here as it travels. This is what we call let the bat travel action. Boom. We can't stiffen the wrist, we can't flare the lead elbow, and push the bat through the zone. Can't push it through. You've deadened. You've lost all your kinetic energy, all your bat speed at the point of contact. You've lost last gear. Have you ever driven stick shift and missed third or fourth gear? Embarrassing, isn't it? Got to go back down to low gear again, start all over. Well, I'll tell you, the pitcher won't let you do that. He won't say, oh, I'll take that pitch back. You missed a gear. Ain't going to happen. It's already by you. Strike one. You only get to make so many mistakes and you're through, baby. Second, power collector. Lead wrist. Lead wrist. That action. The ability to get it collected, hold it here. The resulting pressure points, the bottom three fingers of this hand. <laughs> and a movement. Bang. Movement. Let the bat travel. So those are two very important ones. The third one's maybe not as critical, but we go back and reemphasize it as I turn my back to you just a little bit. I want the hand position zeroed in on. The third power collector is the Y of the top hand. Now the bat should be loose enough not to be choked off in a permanent position. That's slow. What we want the bat to do is be able to travel from the cradle of the area right up through the hand. Now I'll lay it down on a different angle so we can see a little better. I want the bat to travel right here in my top hand. I want it to be able to travel in that area. If I choke it off, notice the stiffness in my hands. And it's an over, it's rarely, rarely ever talked about in hitting. People talk about not choking the bat off, but we get into this position and the bat can travel here. This is one of the really keys in developing Entcovilla. Boy, can he get the bat to move in that area of his top hand and therefore increase bat speed. When we first started working with Pete, he really couldn't hit the ball off the tee very well, quite frankly. He's sitting in a situation where I'd set him up and we have a, a dormitory over, uh, oh, 100, 150 foot away. We had a big cage and I'd set him up on a tee and he'd start working and he would stride and separate and get big and grunt and hit the ball off the tee. And we uh, scared every pigeon 
on campus because he's hitting them 150 foot over my net, bouncing them off the dormitory. And I laugh and laugh, and I can remember back now when I watch him hit as a major leaguer, he still makes mistakes. We all do. It's not that pure. But how bad he was when I first saw him. And one of the keys to him was to get him a good lever assembly. Really, really important to Pete Incovea. His junior year, he hits 48 home runs, as uh, Jim mentioned earlier, as we came on the air. Remarkable. I don't know that it'll be broken, not in the number of games we play in the present college season. Now, thinking back with me, power collector one, pressure point, one. Power collector, two, lead wrist, pressure point, two, bottom three fingers of the lead hand. We're keeping the prehensile grips, fingertips, and thumbs out of the action so the bat can travel, not choking it off. It's a loose bat through here. It's a loose club head through here. Chrissy, it's a loose racket head. Bobby Tway, it's a loose club head. Can't choke it off. Can't muscle it. Can't panic. And then three is that frame, that little frame of the prehensile grip of the top hand, in the top hand area. Levitt relaxed. I recall a story I think about right now. Throw it in there. Al Rosen, who was a general manager of San Francisco last year, executive of the year, broke his index finger when he was the Cleveland Indians 20-some years ago. His career year was 47 home runs. He hit them that year with a broken finger. Tell you something about keeping the top hand relaxed and letting it travel. So we have three power collectors, three pressure points, the third pressure point being on the index finger itself. On the index finger, third pressure point. In this area right here on that camera, good job. All right. Now, where do those go? Let's get back into a situation looking here. We move. Notice my back elbow comes here. My lead wrist is in a position working from the elbows down. It has flexion, flexion, flexion to extension. Hit the ball elbows down, kids. No shoulders. Flexion. One, two. Three, it'll carry it right here. Let it travel as we get ready to release it. The key is what we call the master collector and it is the lead arm. Master collector is the lead arm. It takes all three power collectors and as the bat is released, transfers that type of release to the front side. And the lead arm is extremely critical in hitting success. Extremely critical. Okay? At that particular point, we just put it together. Lead arm, master power collector. If it does its job, maintains flexion, we've controlled centrifugal force, it all then comes together. All this energy that we plugged into all this flow up through the body and into the lever assembly is now released, bang, let it travel, hit it deep. We've done it from, all the power, from a power base. We now have gotten a sequence. Lever assembly is number three in the gears and number four is real simple, isn't it? It's an automatic release. Swinging the bat is the last thing. If we've controlled the energy properly, we're gonna have the maximum bat speed. We're shifting from third to fourth gear at the point of release and the bat is traveling at the highest possible velocity which we can deal with. I remember in recruiting Terry Kennedy, who's now catching with the Baltimore Oils. He used to talk about coming out and swinging about 100 times, 1,000 times a week, 100 times a day. That was his plan of action. And swing the bat, boom. Goes to college, average player, not recruited highly, ends up making All-American, hitting 24 home runs. Dedication to the swing. And one thing you see with Kennedy, although he's a big guy, doesn't have a lot of flexibility in his lower body, you're seeing an awful lot of quick bat through the zone. Regardless of individual hitting styles, it doesn't make too much difference whatsoever on individual hitting styles. It is how people unlock. You can take an aluminum bat and you can swing it hard and you can have some success if the ball is in the middle of the zone. In order to hit sequentially and the unlocking process works correctly, we're going to get a lot more coverage. Now we're going to go back and capsule it and bring in some new terms over the next four or five minutes. And then we'll go out to our audience and have you respond by questions. But give me about five minutes to go through this and go back and pick up a couple of little items for you. Let's talk about the term quick zones. Why do I want the power base short? In getting a power base short, I am concerned about the distance between my knees. This distance is what I call a quick zone. That's the quick zone, distance between my knees. Now, it's not so much on the stride, but when I take a hitting action, when I'm hitting, in a hitting action and I move, so many people bow out. We look like we're pushing a wheelbarrow. We separate our powers here. We get to go on the back leg, we get to go on our front leg, and we get power dissipating in both directions. We're shooting double barrel shotgun this 